Hello Concrete fans, today we're going to talk about the ACI 211 Mixture Design Procedure, a very popular, very, very widely used method. We're going to first talk about an introduction, give you an overview of it, and then talk about how to determine the water content needed in the mixture design process. Thanks, let's get started. These notes introduce the ACI 211.1 Mixture Procedure. And but we're going to use two very important modifications, both developed by one of the concrete greats, Ken Hover. Okay, The first one, there's going to be a water content adjustment that's going to be based on the mixture design details. More coming up. Number two, there's many tables that are typically used in the ACI 211 procedure, but Ken has taken those tables and turned them into graphs. I love graphs. I bet you do too. This makes your life easier, makes it better, easier to understand what's going on. But if you like tables, you can look those up in the original document. Anyway, this graph, this, this paper, A Graphical Approach to Concrete Proportioning, does a great job of explaining everything. And I'm going to um, modify a few figures out of that document to use in these notes to help you out. Let's get started. In, in order to, to do the ACI 211 procedure, you need these things. You need to understand when you're going, what you're going to build and what is the allowable maximum aggregate size that you can use to build that. We've talked about that in previous videos. You're also going to have to determine the slump required for, for the structure. Now, most of the time, whoever you're designing the concrete mixture for, they'll give you some idea about what the slump is, but you, you need to know this as well. Then you might have to modify, um, modify the water demand, and you have to know what that number needs to be. You're going to have to know the strength and durability requirements for your mixture. You have to know the standard deviation for producing that mixture. You have to know the air content needed, the dry rotted unit weight of the coarse aggregate, the fineness modulus of the sand, and the specific gravity of the coarse and fine aggregate. And finally, the absorption capacity of the course of fine aggregate so that you can do your moisture corrections. These are all things that you need in order to do the ACI 211 mixture design procedure. And every one of these mixtures are going to be designed on either a cubic yard basis or a cubic meter basis. And as you probably know, there's 27 cubic feet in a cubic yard. That's what we'll be designing it to, 27 cubic feet of material. So while there's interplay between the design of the different ingredients, we usually do this in the following steps. We determine the amount of water, the binder, the air volume or air content, the coarse aggregate, the fine aggregate. And this last one down here is a really important one. It's kind of fitting that it got cut off the bottom because then you have to trial batch. And a lot of people forget about trial batching. So I guess it's kind of neat that it, it got cut off. It's really important because the ACI 211 mixture design is just a guess. That's what it is. It's an educated guess to hopefully get you in the right ballpark. Sometimes it doesn't always do that. So you have to mix it up. You have to see what you get, and see if it's right. Now let's talk about the water. We're going to determine how much water you need in a given mixture. The water is used to lubricate the mixture. And we're going to design as if there is no admixtures. Now that's kind of crazy because we almost always have admixtures. we got to start somewhere. And a long time ago, they didn't have admixtures. So we're going to act like we don't have any at first. But I'll tell you how to adjust for that. And then we're going to make a correction later. ACI 211 bases the amount of water on two things, the slump and the maximum nominal aggregate size. You're going to see this over and over again. We need to make sure our mixtures are workable enough so that they can be constructed. This is a big deal. Your mixture design procedure fails if you can't build anything with it. So your mixtures need to be constructible. The slump is going to depend on the equipment, the contractor, what their methods are, what kind of crew they have, what they're trying to build. It depends on a lot of different things. 
But here's some general guidance. Typically you slip form concrete is usually less than three inches of slope. Slip form concrete is like a pavement or sometimes barrier wall, okay? Sometimes they'll slip form pipe. And in those cases, you might have very, very low slumps. If you're gonna hand place the concrete, but you, that you're doing flat work, like a sidewalk or like a large slab, then you usually want four inches to six inches of slump. If you've got something that's congested reinforcement, maybe in like a structural member, you may need to have six to eight inches, okay? These are all type of things that you're going to have to just ask kind of the contractor what they want or give them a lot of different opportunities to see what mixture design they, they, they like. So as the water content goes up, then the mortar in the concrete becomes less viscous and flows more easily. That's kind of what I said earlier. Water's like a lubricant. Remember, though, let's be very careful about adding water. As the more water you add the lower the strength is and the worse your durability is. So you need enough water, but not too much. So as I've said before, not only is slump important, but the maximum nominal aggregate size is also important. This is done because people think that the surface area is very important in, in the mixture design. The surface area of the aggregates is what I'm saying. For example, if I have two concretes and I'm kind of being able to look inside of them, if I have one that's made up of a couple of more coarse aggregates and then mortar, and the other one that's made up of a bunch more coarse aggregates and then mortar, this is larger aggregates, this is smaller aggregates, this one had, would have a lower surface area, and people would think that you would need less mortar for the same slump. And here, this one, because of a higher surface area, people would, would think that you would need a higher mortar for the same slump. The thought is, is that the mortar needs to coat all of these particles, okay? Because the particles don't really touch inside the concrete. They're kind of like floating. It's like a suspension. It's like something floating in the water. It's crazy, but it's floating inside mortar. So they think that if there's more aggregates to float, that you're gonna need more mortar. This means that ACI suggests that you can use less water if you use larger aggregates. Well, this concept is correct in extreme cases. It's, um, it doesn't seem to be that important for moderate changes in surface area. We'll talk more about this coming up. So again, I don't wanna totally say this is incorrect because I, I, think, I think there's some science here. I th think there's some truth here, but it's not quite as easy as ACI 211 makes it out to be. The original ACI 211 mixture procedure was actually derived, we did lots and lots of mixes, but they derived them for a single aggregate source. Isn't that crazy? And a single sand source with no admixtures in it, no SCMs, and in an air-conditioned lab. How is this representative of what we'll have in the field? Because modern concrete's very different than this. And so because of that, we need to modify the mixture, modify this process by adding or reducing the water content. For example, if our mixture, if our um, concrete materials are very different than the original materials investigated, we're going to have to make changes. For most ACI 211 mixture designs, I find that you should reduce the water content by about 20%. And we're going to use something called a reduction factor. And I wish there was more science to this. I really, really wish there was. I wish there's a way you could put in your aggregates or put in your admixtures or put in something else and it would tell you distinctly what the re water reduction number is. But I'm sorry, we don't have that. We can't do that right now. And so you're going to have to develop this upon your own from trial and error. But a good starting point may be about a 20% reduction and then you'll dial that in for your materials and your application. There are lots and lots of things that, that can impact this number. For example, I have a table down here where I talk about a characteristic, then I talk about if it will decrease the water or increase the water demand. For example, if I have an aggregate shape, if I have aggregates that are more cubical in shape, 
it might reduce my water demand by about 5%. I may go from a 0.80 to a 0.75. But if I get aggregates that are very, very flat and elongated, okay, this, then it actually might increase the number from a reduction of 0.8 to maybe a reduction of 0.9. Your texture of your aggregate matters. If your aggregate's smooth versus rough, your aggregate gradation, what is a good aggregate gradation? Don't worry, we'll talk about that in a tarantula mix design procedure. And what's a bad one? Admixtures. Oh my gosh, it's very common to use admixtures in concrete today. And here you can see normal range, mid range, and high range water reducers. All of these things will reduce your water demand by some amount. Air content will as well. So will SEMs like fly ash, but silica fume will actually make it worse. And then there's other stuff. There's all kinds of things that can impact your water demand of concrete. That's why this is kind of hard to get right. That's why you got to figure it out by trial and error. Figure out for yourself, for your materials. Well, based on your slump and your nominal maximum aggregate size, you determine your water content. Yeah, I've been, I've been saying that, right? Well, this is, this is the chart that makes all the magic happen right here. We can see we've got the slump over here, we've got the water content over here, and this is care of Dr. Hover, and we have the nominal maximum aggregate size over here. This is a modification of the tables in ACI 211 to be graphical. Ha! I love graphical stuff. So, for example, if I have a three-inch slump, and I trace across here, and I'm using a one-inch maximum nominal aggregate size, you can see the magic here, Trace, 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 trace. And then go down here. It says that I need 320 pounds per one cubic yard. 320 pounds per one cubic yard. That's cool. But remember, I told you about that water reduction factor. This is where you would reduce it. You would take 320 multiply by 0.8 or 0.7 or perhaps even larger than one if you've got some really bad things happening to your concrete mixture and you modify it from there. It's really important to be able to control this number because ACI 211, as I said before, was developed for one aggregate, one coarse aggregate, one fine aggregate, no admixtures. So we need to be able to adjust this. So this Reduction factor is really important. 